Thank you for joining us for this installment of Refresh, our online Bible study. One of the greatest pieces of equipment that was developed for and has been deployed by soldiers and law enforcement officers is the Kevlar vest. In military circles early on, it was called a flak jacket. Uh, and by law enforcement officers, it's most often called a bulletproof vest. The purpose of the vest is to prevent uh, anything from harming the vital organs located in the trunk of the body. You stop and think about it. Most of what is uh, vital to our life is found in our trunk area between our shoulders and our waist. And so uh, uh, this uh, vest was designed to stop bullets or pieces of shell fragments that were flying through from being able to penetrate that uh, those vital organs. Coupled with things like a helmet uh, and face masks, it uh, protects us uh, from all of those dangers that would come our way. Well, there is a spiritual equivalent to that as we look at the armor of God, and that's what we're going to look at today. As Paul called it, the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to take some time to look into that and to understand what God has given to protect our spiritual heart. Now, when the Bible talks about the heart, it speaks of more than just that heart that we think of, for instance, on Valentine's Day, or that we use as a symbol for love. Biblically speaking, the heart was the total part of the inner being. It was it was the thinking faculties. It was the worldview. It, it does include emotion and will, disposition, all of those factors that work together to determine our behavior. As our heart goes, so our behavior goes. Uh, it said in Proverbs that we were to guard our heart with all diligence because from our heart, from this inner being, from our thoughts, our emotions, our will, all of that working together flow all the issues of life. So how can we guard our heart? What has God given us in light of the spiritual battle that we have in? Uh, found ourselves in with the devil, how can we protect our heart? And he's given to us the breastplate of righteousness. So after I pray, we're going to dig into um, Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, we're going to look at uh, verse 14, the latter part of verse 14, and come to an understanding about how we can protect our spiritual heart, and what God has given to us to be able to do that. So I'm going to pray. And after I pray, I invite you to join us in our scripture. Father, I thank you that you've not left us to this battle alone. We have learned in the previous weeks that the struggle is real. The enemy is clever, but our victory is assured. Thank you for giving us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to see how this breastplate of righteousness is part of the victory in him that you have already provided for us and show us how to put on this breastplate and to utilize this breastplate and how this breastplate protects us from what the devil would throw at us to defeat us and discourage us and stop us. To you, the only wise, immortal, invisible God, we give you glory forever through the name of your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. So I'll see you on the other side in Ephesians chapter 6. Here we are in our scripture for today, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. Uh, let's read it again, where Paul says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now let me remind you just a little bit uh, about this belt of truth. We talked about that last week, that so many of the other pieces of armor relate in some way to the belt of truth. And that as we begin to consider uh, this, all of these defenses that God has given to us for the spiritual battle, we, we fight them all with truth. If our truth is not correct, if we are misbelieving, we're not believing God's word, trusting God's word and what it says, then really these tools don't work. They are vulnerable. They're not the genuine article, and uh, we are in danger. So we start with the fact we have to know biblical truth and believe biblical truth. And we talked about that last week. 
knowing God's word and studying God's word and putting it into place in your life every day. Today, we're going to talk about putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, the breastplate for a Roman soldier, uh, depending on what period of history you were looking at, and depending on what they were doing at the time, uh, would vary. Uh, the heaviest piece of um, the breastplate would be several over overlapping pieces of, uh, of metal um, that were held together by bolts and that pro uh, gave several layers of protection from any sort of frontal attack. Uh, a more commonly seen uh, in Paul's day breastplate would be one that was made of chain mail that fitted over uh, a leather vest that would go over the tunic. So you would kind of have a couple of layers uh, of, of protection there. But in whichever case, they were called the breastplate. An interesting thing about the breastplate and how it relates to the belt, uh, the breastplate uh, would ha had ways that it would attach to the belt so that the breastplate could not be pushed up. Imagine if you were in hand-to-hand -hand combat and you had this this breastplate on and your opponent was able to get his hands up under yours and to grab your breastplate and push it up, he could cut off your airflow and um, it, you would not last very long in the battle with that um, breastplate pressing hard against your Adam's apple and your esophagus and, uh, and your trachea and eventually keeping you from breathing. So, the truth, again, and the truth, the truth about righteousness is what protects us. Now, we talked about the breastplate protects the heart and all the vital organs. And often uh, the Bible talks about uh, our, our inner self. And it talks about our heart in terms of inner organs. In fact, you hear the, the old King James used to talk about bowels of compassion. Uh, and you read sometimes in scripture where it talks about God trying the kidneys. And it talks about all of the visceral organs, including the heart. And that was the physical equivalent of sp spiritually what was going on with us. Just like all of those physical organs work together, we have several spiritual factors that work together. For our heart, one is our mind, our thinking. Uh, in that, you would include include attitude. You would include um, worldview. So all of the mental stuff that would be involved with that. You would also uh, include emotions in that, and then you would also include matters of the will or um, your disposition your aspirations. And you could really also include that, your emotions, your desires, your dreams, your wants. So, so much of this overlaps, uh, kind of like circles in a Venn diagram. But that's what the Bible referred to as our heart. So God realizing that so much of our spiritual um, vitality is wrapped up in these facets of our inner being. He has given to us a very important tool to protect us from that. It is a breastplate that protects our heart, but it is a breastplate we see of righteousness. Now, how are we to understand that? Well, there are two ways in the New Testament, that righteousness is referred to. Uh, the first one of those ways we see is righteousness practiced. That is, our, our right living. Uh, a couple of verses here uh, that are examples of that. Uh, Seek first the kingdom of God and his, right, and his righteousness. So you're seeking righteousness and all these things will be added to you so that righteousness would be something that you would seek after. You would seek to live 
the way God says to live. Romans 6, 13 says, do not present, again, a very active verb, do not present your members to sin as instruments of for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members, again, we're presenting to God as instruments for righteousness. So we understand in biblical terms, one of the ways we understand righteousness is our right living, being obedient to God, doing things the right way by God's definition of right. So I'm going to write that here, living right by God's definition of right. Or simply put, obedience. Living obediently to what God said. Now, I don't believe that's exactly what Paul had in mind when he talked about a breastplate of righteousness, because we're told to, to put these on. These, this is the armor of God, not the armor of man. Um, just like previously, the belt of truth, we don't get to decide our own truth. Uh, we take on the helmet of salvation. We don't save ourselves. Uh, the shield of faith. We don't have faith in ourselves. All of these pieces of armor are things that God has produced and that God makes available to us. So when we talk about this breastplate of righteousness, we, we have to think in terms of this second concept of righteousness, and we call this imputed or credited righteousness. Look what Paul said to the Corinthians. For our sake, and the words in brackets I added to help us understand, for our sake, he, that is God, made him, that is Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin. God made Jesus bear sin. Why? So that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Become, not achieve, and the righteousness is the righteousness of God, not our own righteousness. In fact, Paul told the Philippian church that he counted everything as loss, and he had just listed all of these tremendous things he had done, all of his accolades. He had shared his resume, what a great person he was before he met Jesus. And he counted all of that as a loss because of the compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus. And he counts them, he says, as rubbish that he may get be gain Christ. Look at this in verse nine. Be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that that righteousness that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So we see this as imputed righteousness. Righteous, okay, Jesus's righteousness. I like to think of it in this term, deposited into our account. All of Jesus' righteousness deposited into our account. Now, here is, I don't want you to miss this, because all of this is, this is where all this is going to start coming together. Christ, I'm going to write this so you can see the relation. Christ's righteousness in us enables right living from us. Christ putting his righteousness, and he does that through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit of God resides in us, there is this dynamic package of righteousness available to us. The Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he enables us to live in right ways we cannot live on our own. Now, how does all of this 
uh, come about as a breastplate. How do I put all of this on and make it my breastplate of righteousness? I'm trying to add an extra page here. Hold on just a second. Um, there we go. How to put on your breastplate. Number one is recognize. Recognize our failure to be righteous. You see, one of the things the devil wants to do to us is to accuse us. In fact, the devil is called our accuser. And quite often what the devil will do to try to defeat us is that he will remind us what miserable failures we are. You know what most of us do? In fact, I, I find myself doing this from time to time. I find myself arguing with the devil. Well, devil, that can't be true. I, I'm not as bad as you say I am. At least I'm better than so-and-so. You know how convenient it is to find somebody who is not as righteous as you are? We, we call this self-righteousness. We can always find somebody to whom we compare favorably if we look hard enough. Um, so the devil will say, well, you know, you're a miserable, you're a miserable failure. You're not right. You don't live right. You see how sinful you are. And we argue with him. Well, you know what? I am a little sinful, but hey, at least I'm better than so and so. And we start to argue our case based on our own merit. So. The first step is every day to recognize our failure to be righteous. I cannot be righteous on my own. There is nothing. Paul said, I know in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. So one of two ways the devil can trick us is, number one, he can cause us to argue with him and compare ourselves to others, or he can make us feel a little bit better about ourselves than, than we ought to. Maybe we begin to believe it ourselves. Well, you know what? We are pretty righteous, but we base it on our righteousness. And what happens when you, maybe you've seen this cycle in your life. You, you kind of start living like you ought to live for a while and you're doing like you ought to do for a while. And then all of a sudden you stumble and you fall. And this house of cards that you have built on all these good things you have done comes cram, come crumbling down because you recognize, wait a minute, I'm human after all. The devil makes you feel miserable. You feel all manner of, of guilt about that. Uh, you feel all manner of unworthiness, and you just feel like a miserable worm, and the devil's got you wallowing in self-pity. Just go ahead you know, agree with the devil on this case. It's okay to say, you know what, devil, you're right. I am a miserable failure. Recognize our failure to live righteous. But second of all, claim the righteousness of Jesus on our behalf. This verse here, 2 Corinthians 5.21, is one of those I would highly recommend memorizing. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What you do is that when the devil comes at you and tells you how what a miserable failure you are, you take the truth to which your breastplate of righteousness is attached and the truth that you use to counter the devil's attack is this truth right here. You know what, devil, you're right. I am an absolute, miserable, utter failure, but I have the righteousness of Christ. Jesus died on a cross on my behalf, and he died for me. So here's what I want to encourage you to do as you consider the righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. First of all, stop arguing with the devil. Own it. Uh, own, own the reality that apart from Christ, you're nothing. But while you're owning that reality, also claim the blessing that in Christ, 
you are righteous. The Bible tells us that uh, in the last days in the book of Revelation, when we're living in the restored kingdom of God, that God is going to place place on us. He is going to give us a new robe, a robe of white. That represents righteousness given to us, a reminder of what is given to us. Not that what we earned, but what was given to us. So you're going to come under attack from the devil. And he's going to point out every fault that you have. He's going to point out every failure that you ever have, that you have had, or that you have the potential to have. He's going to remind you of every shortcoming that you have. And he's going to remind you that, yeah, things may be going pretty good right now, but you know what? You're going to fail. That's when you fall back on the grace of God. And you just remind the devil, you know what, devil, I know you're right. But thankfully, it's not my righteousness, but Christ's that matters. And I have had all the righteousness of Christ deposited in my account. On the cross, Jesus paid for every one of my sins, past, present, and future. And in him, I am righteous in God's eyes. You'll find if you come back at the devil with that part of truth, that it begins to protect your heart. It protects your thinking. It protects your emotions, those emotions you feel, the guilt that you feel, um, your will when you're tempted. Well, you know what? I may as well go ahead and sin anyway. I'm, I'm a failure. But no, I don't have to sin because the righteousness of Jesus in me enables right living from me. So Holy Spirit, will you use the righteousness of Christ? Will you let the righteousness of Christ flow from me instead? Come back at the devil with the truth of who you are in Jesus, that you are righteous in him. So I hope this is an encouraging word to you, because listen, this is, this is one of the attacks we see often and we get often. And I want you to know that and be prepared for that. Know the truth, the truth of the imputed or credited righteousness of Christ on your behalf. Claim that every day. Remind yourself of that every morning throughout the day. Memorize 2 Corinthians 5.21. That God made him to be sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What a tremendous truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next time.